This is Reuters. I'm Allison Kosick. AIG CEO Edward Liddy told lawmakers on Capitol Hill today that he'll ask employees who received $165 million in bonuses to give half the money back. Liddy said, quote, the cold realities of competition push the insurer to pay the bonuses. Joining us now from Capitol Hill to talk about Mr. Liddy's proposal and the road ahead for regulatory reform is Congressman Spencer Baucus of Alabama. He's the ranking Republican on the House Financial Services Committee. Also joining us is Reuters economics specialist editor Kristen Roberts. Congressman, I'm going to start here. You said this morning that anger about AIG's bonuses was distracting Congress from the bigger need to unwind the company and recoup taxpayer funds. What do you what? make of Mr. Liddy's proposal to give to have employees give half their bonuses back? What do you oh, think yes, about that? Yes. And, and has the push to recoup bonuses been misguided? Well, uh, you know, a lot of the damage has been done, but I think it. Uh, I obviously think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, I think Main Street America, you know, when you talk about a million dollar bonus to someone that's making uh, thirty or forty thousand dollars a year, uh, and it's a company that's losing money, it's it's pretty hard uh, to argue. Uh, even the logic of you know you may need uh, these people in place, it's just it's very hard for the taxpayers to accept. Do you have confidence at this point in Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner's ability to manage the unwinding of AIG and the financial rescue more broadly? This morning, your colleague Connie Mack called on Secretary Geithner to resign. What are your thoughts about all this? Well, uh, you know, I, Secretary Geithner, obviously, he started off uh, very shakily, you know, the most, the first that a lot of people uh, heard was about his tax problems. Uh, my thought is that we, uh, we're all in this together and uh, that we need to work towards solutions and uh, try to work together. Do you think he should resign? Uh, what is that? Do you think he should resign? Uh, I'm not prepared to, to, to uh, call on him to resign. Uh, you know, I, I'm certainly I'm not there, no. Okay, Kristen, why don't you jump in? Turning to regulatory reform, Democrats seem to be coalescing around this idea of giving the Federal Reserve the role of systemic risk regulator. Now, you've raised some some concern about the Fed taking on that role. What is a better option? Well, perhaps having a, a group, a working group of, uh, of regulators uh, would be one uh, example of, a, of another approach. And let me tell you what, why a, a Fed bothers me. First, uh, when they start uh, taking on this role, they're going to have pressure from Congress. So do you politicize the Fed, which is, has at least until this crisis maintained uh, some political insulation? Uh, you're expanding, you know, you're expanding their role. Their, their uh, monetary reform or monetary policy is their number one role, perhaps uh, added to that is a full employment. Uh, but you're, you're loading the wagon pretty full. Uh, you know, I like the idea more of a systemic observer, mm. uh, an agency that uh, maybe says we have a problem and then you have a combination of agencies that decide how to act. Now secondly, I am 100% uh, opposed to giving any regulator, including the Fed, going forward uh, the right to do ad hoc individual bailouts of, of companies in trouble. Uh, I believe that started with long-term capital management and I think it's been a downhill uh, slide since then. It's the government picking winners and losers. Mm -hmm. And what you ultimately end up with is what uh, happened this morning, is you have an angry Congress, you have an uh, executive from a corporation that's taking government money, uh, and uh, there are all sorts of politics and uh, you know, demands for doing this, doing that. It's right. government intervention. And government intervention into the private uh, uh, business operations usually ends very badly. Now, in creating this regulator, whether it's the Fed or some other body, how does Congress ensure that you're not essentially putting a buffer around companies that are so-called too big to fail and telling the market, signaling to the market that these companies now carry an implied government guarantee? It's a tremendous problem and it's why I have urged caution. 
Uh, too big to fail is, means too small to say. And it creates an, either an elite group where there is an implied guarantee by the government and gives that group uh, advantages, or if you overregulate that group, I think it's a death sentence. And you basically uh, kill off uh, any large corporation because you basically overregulate them over time out of existence. In fact, if we were to take the top 10 or top, 10, top 15 corporations and we imposed uh, uh, onerous regulations on them, or you know, just uh, there's plenty of regulations today, I think the productivity of those uh, corporations would suffer. Uh, so it, it is a difficult choice. Uh, yeah, we do have a, a we we have a, a 1930s regulatory system in place. In the 21st century, we all knew we we all know we need modernization, but a systemic regulator are, is a significant step and one that we ought to uh, carefully consider. And we shouldn't adopt uh, uh, deadlines arbitrarily arbitrary deadlines like, you know, the G20 meeting mm -hmm. uh, coming up. Now, speaking about the entire regulatory system that you just mentioned, what are key components of the regulatory reform package that you think need to be included? Well, if you had a failure like AIG, have a liquidation process or a resolution process. And uh, I would say without uh, government uh, funding, without taxpayer funding, uh, you also, with uh, international companies or companies that do business in 100 countries or 150 countries, you are going to need uh, cooperation, at least from uh, the G20 nations. Uh, you know, AIG, uh, they were in several countries. One of the concerns of the Fed, uh, if they did order a liquidation, would you have sort of a feeding frenzy mm -hmm. in other countries with countries swooping in and seizing assets? So we need, we do need some international uh, cooperation or covenant. Uh, you also, you know, you're gonna, as you said earlier, we need to address this thing of too big to fail. And, and, you know, we've obviously gone there, but I think we need an exit strategy. We need to get away from that. And we need, we need to get it when the government invests, you know, billions of dollars in a corporation, it's almost like they're, uh, they're, they're an investor. Uh, in private corporations, a venture capitalist, if you will. Mm. And I think that is that is a very bad thing. You've also raised some issues with the mark-to-market fair value accounting rules. FASB has just issued some new guidance on that. Have you taken a look at that guidance, and do you have a feeling yet for whether or not it's good enough, or will some legislation be needed? My first impression is uh, is it didn't go far enough. Uh, my, my other remark would be that anything helps. Uh, mark to market uh, is a is a good in concept. It doesn't work in a distressed market. It works best when there's a, a market, whether there's a willing seller and a willer, willing buyer. You know, recently with market disruptions, we found that that's not always true. Uh, Mr. Liddy made a good point today. He said that insurance companies they take a risk and it's usually a 30-year exposure, and they have assets that they don't need to dispose of or don't plan to dispose of for 30 years. So while those assets, you know, the market value of those assets may uh, increase and drop on a daily basis, uh, the intrinsic value of those assets does not. Uh, so their there, mark-to-market has caused distortions. Uh, it has caused uh, a lack of confidence uh, on many occasions, and it, it is, it's a very big problem. It's a problem for uh, financial institutions. It's becoming a problem with insurance companies because insurance companies are normally six months to a year uh, right. after financial institutions feel the, the, uh, the distress or pain it begins to uh, affect insurance companies. Now, are regulators telling you that there's more room to go in their guidance, or do you ultimately think this is something Congress is going to need to weigh in on? Uh, if the modifications aren't sufficient, there's tremendous support here uh, for uh, either saying to the SEC, if FASB doesn't go far enough for, for you to take, take over. 
And I think uh, the SEC may, in fact, do that. Uh, the bank regulators are, have become more and more engaged on this issue in the past few months. Uh, so I'm optimistic that, uh, that we'll get there. I don't want to see Congress writing accounting standards. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is a, a, a last resort type uh, action, and I don't think we're there yet. Allison? Yeah, one final question for you, Congressman. Investors have protested the lack of detail coming from the Obama administration, and this week we do expect details on the public-private partnership to take toxic assets off balance sheets. How much public capital to private capital will be involved? Well, we're hearing that probably you're talking about uh, a five-to-one ratio, five public to one private. Uh, but even at, uh, at that 20% or 15% 15 participation by the private market. Uh, I think private investors, because they are, uh, you call them toxic, you know, I think maybe what, if you were trying to be a, a more optimistic, you might just say illiquid assets, uh, then uh, investors are gonna want a high rate of return. And we're, we're really back to September when uh, I asked uh, uh, Secretary Paulson and uh, Chairman Bernanke, what are you going to pay for these assets? That's, that's still the question out there that no one seems to be able to answer. Now, I did advocate in USA Today uh, some two months ago that, you know, if the government was going to intervene, uh, it ought to be in helping establish an auction or some type public-private uh, partnership, but uh, hopefully with the private sector uh, supplying the capital, and I think what you're going to see out of this uh, administration is more of a, a, a with the, the government supplying the majority of funds. Uh, I will say this, you know, illiquid assets, uh, toxic assets, impaired assets, they are a problem. They've been a problem uh, for some time in this market, and uh, they need to be addressed. I would, uh, I do believe mark to market is a key here. I believe that if you, if you uh, modified mark to market, you would give companies a longer uh, uh, period of time to deal with uh, those uh, illiquid assets. And in time, uh, our financial institutions can deal with those. We have a positive yield curve right now. They can borrow uh, at a low rate and lend at a higher rate. Uh, so I think a modification of mark to market uh, would give probably uh, a, a significant amount of relief in that regard. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Thanks to Representative Spencer Baucus Thank and you. Reuters Economics Specialist Editor Kristen Roberts. This is Reuters. I'm Allison Kosick.